So good morning once again, everyone. I want to say thanks for being here. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. And today we're going to talk about debit spreads. Is there anyone out there that has never used a debit spread before? Okay. All right. So a few. Okay, debit spreads can be a really great tool um, to have in your toolbox, um, just kind of like the credit spreads. You know, one of the things that gets talked about a, a lot is you'll go to one website or another and they'll, they'll try to tell you that, um, they'll try to tell you that um, there's one strategy better than another. And the truth of the matter is there really isn't. There's, there's no strategy um, that is superior to another strategy. Um, what, what's important is that you apply a strategy in the right way. Um, every strategy has a purpose, they have a reason, and they're all equally good, okay? Um, you just have to know how to apply them and um, I, I might do this just a little bit differently than other folks, but it's just learned experiences and, and things on how I do it. So we're going to cover my rules. You can decide if you like those rules or not and do something differently. But this is the way I trade debit spreads. And um, uh, first off, let's jump in and let's explain what the heck a debit spread is. So... A bull call debit spread is, is obviously an option strategy that requires a bullish directional assumption. One of the things that uh, kind of gets missed a, a lot of times is people get the idea, well, it's less risk taking a spread trade so I don't have to be as competent in my technical analysis or those kind of things. It's, it's a, a no-lose situation, and that's just not true. Um, a, you have to have a clear directional assumption for a call debit spread, okay? Clear directional assumption. It's a two-leg option strategy. It involves buying a call option and at the same time selling a call option just separated away from the long strike. Um, both long and short legs of the position um, will have the same expiration date. And that's kind of important important to understand what you'll often see me do is leg into a debit spread but essentially what I'm doing is I'm trading a calendar spread at that point anytime you have the the difference in the months okay um, separated um, it, it turns into a calendar spread or what you'll hear people call a diagonal um, so the the true debit spread requires both the long and short contracts to be within the same series, the same month, um, or strike series um, that you're trading. And the strategy is designed to reduce the overall risk of the trade because what it does is it's an it's a hedge to delta. Okay, so it slows down the delta. And it's a hedge to theta, it slows down the theta. Essentially, the short call that you have here um, in a trade um, caps the risk of the trade, but it also caps the potential profit, okay? So the strategy has limited risk, limited reward, okay? It's, it's naturally hedged and um, a calendar spread is considered a debit spread. It, a calendar spread can be a debit spread. Um, but when it's in two separate months, they they differ, differentiate it by, instead of just calling it straight debit spread, they call it a calendar spread. Okay. But it is it can be set up as a debit spread. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So let's take a look at what they look like in the construction of these. You know, what you're gonna find kind of interesting in this, if you guys remember um, the um, bear call credit spread, 
on the on a risk profile chart looks identical. Um, the profile is basically the same, um, but we establish them differently. So what we're looking for in this trade is we're looking we're we're going to buy a call. That's our long strike. We're going to sell a call, our short strike. And my rules are these, and you guys can decide if you like these or not. Um, but I try to trade the long strike as an in the money strike somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. You guys know my rules on that. If I'm going to buy just a straight directional call, it's going to be somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. When I buy a long call within a debit spread, it's going to be the same position on the long side of that trade. The short strike is typically going to be an out of the money. Well, it's always an out of the money for me, but typically going to be somewhere around 30 deltas. Now, let me talk about the philosophy of that. When I take a long position, anytime I take a long position, I want to be in a good leverage situation but I don't want to be in an over leverage situation. And the reason I go with the 70 and 80 delta positions is because these options have a 70 to 80% chance of still being in the money at expiration, meaning still having value. Any option that is not in the money at expiration has no value. It's worth zero. So, these give me that higher probability of being in the money at expiration, higher possibilities. And the short strike being out of the money, somewhere around 30 deltas gives me an option that has about a 70% chance of not being in the money at expiration, giving me that nice wide spread where I can make sufficient money in the trade. Now, my goal every time I establish a credit or a debit spread is to try and put together a trade that has somewhere around a one to one risk reward or better. Oftentimes, you'll see folks that put together debit spreads and they'll put these debit spreads on that are so tight in price, they're actually risking far more money than they can make. And isn't it funny, we will, we will argue, um, I'll put out a trade and someone will argue, hey, that doesn't have you know, X amount of potential reward in the, based on the risk, but we'll do a debit spread like that that has, um, very, has less reward than the risk and think we're doing the right thing. Do you guys ever think about that? We'll put together this debit spread that has much more risk than a potential profit and think, hey, I'm doing the best thing because what I did is I limited my risk so much. Well, yeah, but you also put yourself in a trade that has very little chance of doing much good for you as well. So you're always going to be in this situation where you put on a trade and you've got a, a zero line, a break even on um, debit spreads, just like you do on any other spread, your break-even point, and that's after you've covered your costs in the trade. Um, and your short call strike, your max profit is gonna be up here on this side of it. Your max loss will be down here on this side of it. And as the stock you know, moves, moves up, it can move way beyond your short strike, but you're capped on how much profit you can make. That's this line up here. You're capped. It can only go up so far, and then you're done making money on the trade. You will not make any more than that, okay? The same thing is true if it goes against you. Because we have a limited risk trade, if it moves down, there's a maximum dollar loss that we have in it, and it cannot get bigger than that, okay? Oops. So the bull call debit spread, we're going to be limited risk, okay, or limited profit, and a defined risk. We know what the risk is when we go into the trade, okay. The risk level, relatively low. It's a more conservative trade than a straight-up directional call. 
okay because we put some limiting factors in it so it's a lower risk trade than a directional call it's you want to use it when you're anticipating that significant move in the stock a move up we want to have that good directional assumption you need to be very bullish on the stock obviously it requires two legs and um, you know the opposite position would be a call credit spread okay the call credit spread is going to create basically that exact same profile in your um, in your profit diagram well typically I'm going to be closing them um, I usually don't wait till expiration and the reason is if the trade moved you know in my direction like I wanted it to remember if we wait till expiration even our long call our long calls losing money because of data decay right Anytime there's there's time prior to expiration, theta is decaying against us in this trade. Okay, so if I've kind of reached that maximum, I'm usually not going to wait for theta to, to decay out of this trade. I'm going to just close the trade. Does that make sense? You might as well sell back that time to someone else sell back that time you don't need it anymore take that profit okay so your your setup in here um, your maximum profit you just take the width of the strikes minus the premium what you paid your debit on the trade and that determines your maximum profit okay maximum loss on the trade is the premium that you spend it's just kind of like the long call um, if you buy a four dollar long call your max risk is four hundred dollars if you buy a um, debit spread call debit spread with a four dollar uh, premium your max risk is four dollars okay so you have a limited or a uh, defined risk in the trade um, but also you have a defined limited profit so pros on the trade is the limited risk it has a hedging um, aspect for volatility one of the things that makes the debit spread really or to me more viable is not is trading them in a way to hedge volatility or to hedge that theta um, a lot of people think of a debit spread is they look at a, a chart and they they look at an option and the option is it's $25 a share to buy the option and they say well I can't afford that and what a lot of places are teaching is that well if you can't afford it then the thing to do is to use a debit spread and we try to pick up let's say we pick up $15 by selling an option so now our trade in here is obviously we've got ten dollars at risk on the trade which is which is great okay but what they what they're doing really is they're taking a trade they couldn't afford initially and here's what I would suggest guys if you look at an option contract and you say hey that $25 option contract it's too much I can't afford that then you really should walk away even from a debit spread on these trades because what happens here is people are over trading them anybody ever got in a debit spread saw the losses were much bigger than you expected And then panic on the trade and then you're in trouble right so you really shouldn't take any trade that is um, is beyond your reach beyond your risk tolerance to begin with because if you wouldn't do it normally 
why why try to uh, manipulate something to make it palatable what you're probably going to do is put yourself into a trade that provides uh, more risk than a potential return trying to lower the cost enough to make it palatable for you and now you're in a bad trade okay cons of these is they have limited profit if you're doing the directional analysis anyway if you're doing the the uh, analysis overall you're putting on a trade where you know you're capping your profit potential in the trade um, the other con is your directional assumption has to be right timing is just as important on debit spreads as it is on anything else now one thing that is nice is you do have a little bit of a break on these because um, the short strike actually um, hedges the theta so you don't have as much damage to your theta yes you want to always have a stop loss Tom absolutely you want to have a stop loss but you have to think about how you're going to put that trade together okay and I'll show you the way I do that here once we finish these slides okay um seems like you're putting these two things you're really just Um, basically what you're doing yeah is you're lowering your Delta yeah absolutely you're lowering your Delta on the trade you're lowering your theta on the trade you're lowering lowering your risk to volatility and you are capping your potential profits so that's what you're doing you're you're um, cheapening the trade okay by lowering that Delta okay and then one of the cons I think is again in the Delta inhibits profits because we're hedging that Delta we're we're removing the long um, gains possible in the trade okay well um, let's think about this if you buy a 70 Delta option okay if you buy a 70 Delta call Sorry, I lost my mouse there for a second. If you buy a 70 delta call, you're long 70 deltas, right? If you sell an out of the money 30 delta call, you're negative 30 deltas here. So what's your overall delta position? Yeah, now you're only long 40 deltas. So what that means is for every $1 move, the stock moves up, you make 40 cents. Okay. So you've changed the profile of the trade. So it's a plus, it's a, it's a, uh, a pro because it lowers the risk of the trade, but it's also a con because you're doing the, the work for the directional trade, but you're limiting your potential growth in the trade. Okay. Now the opposite side is the bear put debit spread. They're essentially the same in the sense that we buy a long put that's somewhere between 70 and 80 deltas. And then we buy or sell an out of the money put somewhere around 30 deltas. And the whole idea is once again, designed to lower that data and that delta, that theta in the trade and um, try to offset some of the risk. Now I will tell you in a put debit spread, the put debit spread really kind of makes a little more sense because one of the great features in a debit spread is the offsetting of volatility okay and we know when a stock falls it tends to have more volatility right so the put debit spread actually has a little bit more at least in my book a little bit more validity because it helps us balance volatility a little bit better and uh, can help us in that real choppy uh, move that sometimes occurs when a stock moves lower. 
So in this position, we've got, we buy one long put, we buy or sell one out of the money put. And here's my rules again. I'm doing an in the money 70 to 80 deltas. And that of course on a put is gonna be a negative delta and a short out of the money 30 delta. And again, I'm trying to reach that one to one or better in the trade to try and establish that good setup position. And the idea of this is the, the stock moves lower. Your stock price might be right in here, you know, and the stock moves lower and we have a maximum profit. This is the max that we can make and that happens to be the amount, um, the, the difference between the strikes and the amount you paid on the trade. And it also has, if the stock moves up against you, a maximum loss or a limited loss on the way up, okay? So we have that defined risk, defined loss, we have um, a relatively low trade setup. It's more conservative than a buying a straight put. Okay, you have to be bearish on the trade. You just have to have that directional assumption that's bearish. Okay. And um, what I kind of put in here is if you feel that that it's just too risky going with the directional put, that would be one of the reasons to consider the debit spread. Um, so max profit here on this trade, again, it's a width of strikes minus the premium that you spend. And your max profit is your premium spent. Okay, or your max loss premium spent. And basically, you've got the same pros and cons in these trades. Well, both are going to show profit kind of equally, depending on how, how the stock moves. Um, but one thing is, is certainly true, Tim. Um, when a stock moves up, it tends to move up slower than when a stock moves down. When a stock moves down, it just usually moves down pretty quickly, right? So when that occurs, um, you're right in suggesting that when it moves down, they can profit a little bit faster, okay? But it's just, it's just because of the nature of the way the stocks move up or down. Uh, moving up, you know, the old rule, um, um, stocks take the escalator up and they take the elevator shaft going down. Not the elevator, the elevator shaft going down. Um, Steve, yeah, that's the way I trade them. I leg into my debit spreads. Okay. And it's really because I don't want to limit my profit in the trade too quickly. All right. And so that's what I teach all the time is I usually sell my short strike after I get movement in the stock, the directional movement that I was expecting. Then I look at selling my short strike. That, way, that gives me a, a larger spread and usually gives me more money um, in the short call that I, that I sell. Um, I get a better, a better trade when I do that. Okay, but we'll talk about that here in just a second. So here in these, um, what we're doing is we're hedging that theta decay, but I want everyone to understand very clearly that theta is working against a debit spread. No matter what you do here on this, you have a theta element that's working against you. So one of the really important things, and one of the things that I see a lot of people making mistakes with on debit spreads, is they actually put themselves in a situation where they take too short a time frame. okay? You see, it's just like any call trade. We Timing is important, but how many in here could say that you're always right on the, the direction and the timing? 
I can tell you after 30 years of trading, I am rarely exactly right on direction and timing. Okay, I might get one of them right, but I rarely am going to make both of those right. So I want to give myself enough time for the expected move. Otherwise, I end up hurting myself because of the rapid rate of theta decay. So typically, guys, when I'm going to put on a debit spread, the debit spread is always going to be put on with about 60 days to expiration at a minimum. I usually don't want to go a shorter time than that. And the reason is if I put on a, a spread, and it doesn't matter if it's long or short, We've all done this, right? We put on the spread thinking, oh, it's going to pop, it's going to move up, or it's going to fall, it's going to just drop like a rock. And then it doesn't do anything for, for about a week and a half. Okay? Doesn't do anything for about a week and a half, or even more. And then if we had too short of a time frame, if we put a 30-day trade on that, that theta in that week and a half or two weeks is really starting to get into our profit. Okay, it's really starting to hurt us quick in that trade. And I want to avoid those situations by just allowing plenty of time for the trade. Okay, so I would rather spend a little bit more money buying more time and have less effect in the theta, give myself that period around 30 days before that theta really starts to become a problem for me. The other part of it is if it just takes off and goes, I want to give it enough time to be able to get where I want it to go. Okay, so I never want to try and put on those really, really fast debit spreads because I'm just rarely perfectly right on timing and direction. Okay, hope that makes some sense. So that's the end of these slides. Let's take a look. Um, let's take a look at um, what a debit spread might look like as we set them up. If we take a look, anybody, give me a stock, somebody that's, who's interested in, in a stock, something that might be a little bit more expensive. Anybody have something out there? Roku. Let's take a look at, let's, oh, NVIDIA. I like that NVIDIA because it's actually in a buy point. Roku, not so much. Roku's already stretched out. So if we take a look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is kind of in this consolidating, a little bit more of a buy point, right? Then, you know, if we take a look at Roku, Roku's already stretched out. So we've missed this trade, in my opinion, already. We need a rest or pullback to set up this trade. All right. So let's take a look at NVIDIA. What would NVIDIA um, spread look like? Well, we're looking for a bullish spread. I'm assuming everyone is bullish on this. So we're going to look at NVIDIA. We're going to come out here. Obviously, the July is too short. Not enough time. So I'm going to be looking in this August contract. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try and pick up something. We don't have really very good open interest in here. So please keep in mind the open interest should be better than what we're showing here. Um, I would probably avoid this trade just based on the open interest. But if I came in here and I bought this contract, obviously that's a pretty expensive trade to be taking, right? We've got 52% implied volatility on this option. Not a lot of folks can afford to take that trade. Okay, but if we were to come in here and look for something in the 30 delta range and sell this, all right, we've lowered the cost on that trade. Now we're about 41.25 in the position. Okay, and if I, if I show you the analyze on that trade, if we go to the analyze tab, take a look here, we'll shrink this up so we can see it. There's our trade profile, there's our spread. And if we look, let's see if I can shrink this up a little bit more. If we look on, um, 
on on here here's our stock current stock price and if the stock moves up in our direction notice we are making money on this trade the purple line here is if it moved up today the blue line is expiration so an expiration this is our max profit no matter how high the stock goes up here notice that there's no more profit that we can make I can't make anything more if the stock falls we're losing money on the trade but notice we cannot lose more than that 41.25 per share that's our maximum loss on the trade okay so that would be our risk in the position now just because we put this trade on it has a limited risk setup does that mean we don't plan a stop loss in this heck no okay so if I were going to get into this trade, I need to plan a stop loss in this position and I'd probably be underneath that little level of support right there. That's where my stop loss would be. And if the stock reversed and fell through here, I'd be out of the trade. Okay. Does that make sense? So you can manage these the same way and you can close both legs of that trade with a stop loss. <clears throat> yes, your max loss is what you paid for the trade. Just like a call option. Okay, all we're doing is hedging a call option here. <clears throat> yeah my open interest i want sufficient open interest usually at the very bare minimum is going to be 10 times the number of contracts i'm going to trade think about this for a second guys if i were to send out this trade to you guys okay and we have 200 people in the room at that time and 200 people make it just a one contract trade right way options just made the market for this does that make sense we're trading against each other so it makes no sense now if you trade this as an individual that would make more sense you might be able to take that trade all right but if we trade this as a group if we if i send that out all of a sudden we're just trading against each other Okay. All right, um, Rickster. What I'm what I'm going over is the t the typical credit spread, or excuse me, the typical debit spread. How people normally put them on. Okay, which are normally taught in a debit spread. Okay. Now you can do these with any stock. Let's say, for example, you like um, Coke. You don't have to spend a ton of money on something like this. You could go over here into Coke and say, hey, I want to buy this contract and I want to sell this contract and we have a $395 trade. Okay, but let's take a look at the risk reward in these trades. And this is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Notice in this trade, my max profit is 355, my max loss is 395. Okay, so in that position, I'm taking close to a one to one, one to one trade. I can make about as much as I lose. I'm going to lose a little bit more money on this trade just because of the way the options are set up here. Okay. But here's a mistake that people often make. They say, well, I, I, let's go back to that NVIDIA because they're trying to trade an expensive company and they'll come in here and they'll say, well, let's see, I don't wanna spend that much money, so I'll buy this one and then I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell this one. Okay, so we end up with a trade that's 798 bucks. Let's take a look at what happens on this trade. 
Max profit, 702. This one's not bad. Max loss, seven, um, 798. So this one's not terrible, but oftentimes what you're going to see when you try to shorten up that trade a ton, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're losing, potentially losing far more money than you can potentially gain. I want to avoid those trades. Um, when I do a debit spread, I want that one to one or better in the trade. If I can get close to one to one, I'm in a pretty good position. Um, now this here, because we bought one so short, okay, in Delta, notice we've got a 58 Delta and a 51 Delta. That's the next mistake here. If we buy a 58 Delta and we sell a 51 Delta, how much money do we make per $1 move in the stock? Yeah, seven cents. I'm not taking that trade. Does that make sense, guys? Actually, you're making, yeah, seven cents. I'm not taking that trade. Why, why, would, I, why would I take that much risk <clears throat> to make seven cents for every dollar the stock moved? So that's another major mistake that people make in these. They don't give themselves an opportunity to make much money. Even if they bought one in the money here, we buy that 70 Delta option. If we foreshorten this too much, if we come in here and say, I just can't take that much um, risk in the trade, I wanna close this trade up a lot. So we sell one to bring that cost down to 20 bucks. If we look at our Delta in that trade, what are we making on that trade delta wise? We sell what we buy one at 70, we sell one at 53. How much are we going to make for a dollar move? Yeah, 17 cents. It's just going to stink, isn't it? 17 cents for a $1 move. Why why make why do the effort? Okay, does that make sense? Now what's nice here is even because we have a high volatility stock, one of the, the advantages in these trades, if we notice, if I have sell this one or buy this one, I've got a 23 theta decay. It's decaying by 23 cents a day. And if I come out here and I follow my rules, come out here and get something around 30 deltas, I'm gonna pretty much offset my theta decay by selling this option. My theta is going to stay pretty flat until we start heading into that last 30 days of the options. Okay, so that gives me a little bit more time for the stock to start its move. If we happen to catch the trade early, it has to languish around for another week and a half, doesn't do much, we're not really getting damaged by theta decay. Does that make sense? This, this is a debit spread, Yuri, this is not a credit spread. This is a debit spread. You don't want to confuse the two. They are two completely different animals with two completely different sets of rules. Okay. Now, let me explain the way I normally trade these. And, and again, you don't have to do this. This is a, this is a departure from what a lot of people will do in in this but to me would you guys agree everything we do is based on price action you know we get all caught up in the details of the option strategies but if we um if we lose ourselves in that option strategy and forget about the price action of the chart, we're hurting ourselves. Price action is king. Price is the most important thing in a trade. Yep, price is always the priority. 
So if I'm looking at, let's say, you know, guys, I, I've been looking at this XLE. Okay, no trade here right now, but let's say this was a bullish signal here. We were looking at getting into XLE, but we just really don't feel like we're comfortable going full directionally long in the trade. Well, what I would tend to do on a trade like that is I'm going to look at, I want a good quality entry signal for a trade. And then I'm gonna go out here about 60 days and I'm gonna look for a good strong option and I'm gonna buy that option. <clears throat> I'm gonna place my stop loss like I normally would, managing my risk in that trade. Okay, if I'm doing the technical analysis work, let's assume we're buying this right here, okay? If I'm doing the technical analysis work, I want to let the trade work for me. Okay, put my stop loss in, everything is good. I'm usually then going to let that take its time to move up. If it can move up, I might be approaching a resistance or it's just moved up substantially in the trade. Then I'm going to come over and I'm going to sell the call option. I'm going to leg into the debit spread. Okay. Because if this moves up in my direction, okay, this option here gets deeper in the money, right? That means these strikes, if we move three, three strikes into the money on this, okay, I'm gonna be at a um, 85 delta on that, okay? My 30 strike option here, is going to move three strikes in as well. Okay, so this 30 strike option is gonna move in here, which means that one, two, three, this strike will be about 30 deltas at that time. Okay, so by doing that, what I've done is I've opened up a window. Instead of placing my my trade here at 36 and my max upside profit on this of 43 by waiting I'm in at 36 and I'm able to move this out to 46 I'm opening up a wider profit gap in the trade okay giving myself more opportunity to make money in the position. Now, I prefer to trade debit spreads that way. And it doesn't matter to me if, if I have to wait and then sell the, the, the next month out and turn it into a calendar spread, but that's the way I prefer to trade them because it gives me more potential profit. <clears throat> okay. Yes, you're certain, and that's one of the reasons why, Christo, that's one of the reasons why I want to, um, I want to wait for that stock to move up initially. I don't want to cap my profits too soon. Okay, you know, it really comes down to the confidence in your skill on reading price action. If you catch this trade and you say, hey, that's a really good entry, you get into the trade, you have a low risk uh, trade on that, your stop loss is right underneath there, and this is a trade that you could afford anyway, then give that trade the chance to move up, then sell that call option out of the money. If the stock decides to just race higher, you're going to end up making more money on the trade if you get called away. If it doesn't race higher and it pulls back, now you're hedged on that trade. You get paid to wait for the stock to bounce around, do what it needs to do. That's why I typically wait to enter the actual debit spread or to sell a call against the position. Absolutely, Tom, the price action of the chart should always be brought into consideration for every single trade. Every trade you make, you need to be thinking about that setup. I'm gonna go to, um, take a look at GLD. You guys know I bought 
a long position in GLD. I bought a leap option in GLD. Well, GLD is now profitable <clears throat> for me in a trade. But because I'm holding this as a longer term trade, I want you to notice that this just right now is just really starting to move. Okay, if I get another week or so of this moving up, breaks out of this resistance, then I'm gonna sell an out of the money contract. I'm gonna sell something up here to hedge the trade. Okay, so even in my longer term positions, I'm going to be utilizing that lagging into the trade rather than putting them on at the same time. Okay. You would not wait. Um, I, 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 no, I'm never naked, Steve. I'm never naked. Now this trade here on that position, I'm going to be, I'm long this long contract. If I do this as a debit spread, guys, keep in mind, this is actually a calendar spread. Technically speaking, I would be in different months because if I'm going to be in this long delta position on a, um, on a leap option, I don't want to give too much time to the person I'm selling that contract to. So you guys know that I'm in the uh, Jan 2021s. Um, where are they? Why can't I see it? Why can't I see it? There they are. I'm lost. Okay, so I'm in this, um, I think I'm in the 155, 155 I think is what I'm holding. 155 in that trade. I'm just a little bit short of 70 deltas because it pulled back a little bit after we bought it. But I've got 29,000 contracts here. And if I sell a contract against this, I'm likely gonna come up here and uh, like I said, we'll wait for another week or two weeks or something, and I'll probably be selling an August contract against it. I'd try to pick up something in here. Sell one of these. Okay. And the reason is, is because I want the higher theta decay on these contracts on that trade. So it's going to be uh, more of a calendar spread, but in all intents and purposes, it's a debit spread just in separate months. So I don't do any naked call selling. I don't do any naked put selling. Okay. Yep, monthly income on the leap. And I do that all the time. You guys, I, I do that all the time, whether it's a stock trade or an option trade. Okay, now if we were looking at a short position, let's say, um, um, let's see, what, what did we see the other day that looked short? Um, gosh, I can't remember now, all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank. Or something that looked really, really good short, I cannot remember what it was. Boot, was it boot? Yes, it was boot. Okay, so let's say we wanted to put a short on in boot. This is a, obviously a three eight trap short setup. Bearish engulfing candle. We're thinking about a put trade on this. So we look, come over here to boot. And the options here, I can tell you already stink. 99%, 91% implied volatility and very few option choices here. But if we go over here, let's just say that 
it's got good open interest. It doesn't, but let's say that it does. Um, and I'm looking for a put trade in this position. Look at this. This is nuts. They won't even give me a 70 delta option. Oh, yeah, they do. Sorry. Um, I've got a 79 delta here. Terrible bid ask spread. So, and terrible open interest. But I would be buying something like this. And I would be selling something probably right here in that trade. Notice in this trade, max profit 490, max loss 760. That would be enough to tell me I don't want this trade at all. Okay, I don't want this trade at all. Let's try that Starbucks. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna look for, not great, but I'd probably go here. And then I would probably look at selling this option here. Being just a little bit under 30 um, on the Delta. So $6.93 on that trade. And you can see in this trade, max profit 807, max loss 693. That's a far better outcome for me in a trade if I'm gonna put on a direct debit spread. Does that make sense, guys? That's how I want them to look. It all depends on how the price moves, Tim. Um, you can close them anytime you want. You, you know this, that if the trade moves in your direction and you've got money in it, close it. Um, there's, there, you, you're not gonna go broke um, you know, making money. Um, what I, the, the common question I, I normally get is after it reaches that max profit area, should I take the profit off? And I usually say yes. I'm not going to wait for theta to continue to, to decay in those. So if it moves again, moves for me, gaps for me, any of those things, I'll likely just take the profit. Okay? Did my job, put money in my account, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to be right. I'm not here to pick the perfect trade. I'm not here to, you know, squeeze every cent out of every trade. I want to make consistent gains. That would be fine, Rickster, but that's a calendar spread. That is not a debit spread. We're talking about debit spreads today. Okay. So you can certainly do that. There's no rule that says that you can't do that. But we're talking about debit spreads. Okay. The true debit spread has to be within the same series. All right. What the key elements here, guys, is just making sure that you put on a trade that makes sense. That we have a trade that's close to one to one or better. That we have a trade where the deltas make sense. On this one, we've got a 76 delta that we're long and we're selling a 26. So how much do we make on that? If on a $1 move of the stock. There you go. So we make 50 cents a share. That makes sense to me when I'm putting together a directional trade. And the only reason I am doing the short strike at all is because I want to offset theta and maybe some volatility in the trade. So that makes it some sense. Now, please understand, guys, 
if I have full confidence, if I have full confidence in this trade, that this is a good short, that I'm just gonna take this short, okay? I'm gonna take this short, I'm gonna set a stop loss, and that's what I'm gonna do. And if the stock moves down, I may then consider selling the out of the money put. Okay. Yes, you can do debit spreads easily in IRA accounts, qualified accounts. Yep, as well as credit spreads. It does require margin. Debit spread, remember, um, Lauren, the credit spread is we have a a directional assumption, but it's just kind of wishy-washy. We're getting away from price. Remember, both sides of the credit spread are out of the money. If you follow my rules, they're out of the money. We're just looking for the stock to just move directionally lightly or stay flat because we can profit on it if it stays flat. On, on a debit spread, it is a straight up directional trade. You need to have that directional assumption that you think it's going up or going down, okay? It's, it's, it's a long call trade with a hedge. It's a short put trade with a hedge. That's all it is, okay? They won't let you do that in Canada? Man, that stinks, man. If I understand your question right, Craig, you're you're long the stock, but you're also long. You also have a a debit spread on the trade. What you're it seems to me what you don't want to happen is you don't want to have your stock shares taken away from you if you're called out of the trade. Is that correct? Yeah, and in that situation, um, the brokers probably going to if it's a debit spread within and you want to call your broker on this okay don't take my word for this call your broker you're going to normally see the broker say well he's long one contract short one contract those two match that's the trade the shares on the outside of that uh, don't have anything to do with this trade Okay, but make sure you call your broker. Thinkorswim is gonna treat, I can tell you this, Thinkorswim, if you've got a call, um, two puts, um, debit spread, or a two calls, debit spread, um, they're gonna look at that trade as one trade. The shares that you may hold other than that are separate, and they will close that trade based on those two and because they're in the same month. It gets a little bit more complicated when it's a calendar because then the brokerage firm can't quite de determine what you're trying to do there. And so what will happen is you'll get a margin call and they'll want you to repair this situation. What do you want to do? Do you want to give them your shares? Do you want to um, um, exercise your contract? Okay. So make sure, call your broker. Every broker is going to be a little bit different. Make sure you call your broker on those. Okay. So kind of to wrap up here, the debit spread is a great directional strategy and it's used for a specific purpose. It's used to hedge the long risk of your trade. So you're either long a call or long a put. Okay. And you want to reduce the risk of volatility. You want to reduce the risk of theta. You're not, your assumption is not um, super, super strong. 
And so you want that natural hedge, and that would be the reason to do the debit spread. Um, for something like that Starbucks, if, if I really felt like strongly that this was a short trade that I wanted to be in, again, I'm most likely, if I've done the technical analysis work, I'm gonna trust my technical analysis. I'm gonna just buy the put, let the trade move for me. Okay. And not necessarily, Jojo, because they both have reasons. Um, um, they both have that volatility aspect. It's not necessarily one or the other. You can use the debit spread to hedge volatility the same way you're using the credit spread as a volatility hedge. Okay. That makes sense. Now we can we're going to continue this kind of this series kind of like this where we're we're talking about credit spreads, debit spreads. I want to move on and create these little videos on a lot of these strategies because there's lots of different aspects and they kind of all fit together. Can you guys see how a debit spread is a lot like a calendar spread, just different months? And that a debit spread is an awful lot like a, um, a um, what I call a fig leaf, where we have a leap option and a short strike against it. They're a lot like that. It's really a, it's a calendar or that fig leaf. Um, so they have lots of different reasons or ways that you can trade around them. And um, everyone has to study each strategy. And remember, they all have a purpose. Um, there's not one better than the other. And I know there's folks probably in here right now. Can't you just tell me what's the best strategy? out there and I can't because they all have a purpose. They all have a particular time when they're really good to be able to use. Um, and you have to decide what's right for you. Okay. Um, I don't have the slides available. Um, to da I mean, they're going to be in the video, obviously. Watch the video, pause the video, and you'll have the slide. Okay. Yes, in the... Um, in, on the members page, Jay Clark, on the members page, there is a video on the fig leaf trade. There's also videos in there on butterflies and ratio spreads and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so there a lot of these videos have been made. I just want to cover them again. All right. Now, keep in mind, guys, it's just a. Take one strategy. Um, I want to be really, really clear on this, guys. Even though I'm teaching credit spreads and debit spreads, do you ever have to trade them? No, you never have to trade them ever. You don't have to know anything about them really if you don't want to, okay? If we believe that price action um, follows these same basic rules over and over and over, we trend like this. We can just do simple calls and puts and be just fine, okay? We don't have to get fancy. 
And there's folks out there that want to, you know, impress you with their brain that they know all of these things and they know every aspect and they can tweak it and they can, you know, do all of this stuff with volatility. But the fact is, a lot of those people don't make money. They spend all of their time geeking out on the details of options rather than actually just trading the stinking chart. Yeah, Rick couldn't tell you. He, he, he Even if he wanted to, he couldn't explain the debit spread or the credit spread, why theta does what it does, why delta does what it does, why volatility does what it does. But that hasn't stopped Rick from making money, right? Rick trades the chart, and that is the most important thing. Okay, focus on the chart. Apply a strategy to that chart that you that you like, that you prefer, once you understand that strategy. Okay, but it's all about the price action of the chart. All of these strategies have a purpose, have a reason, have a use. But be careful not to get yourself so overcomplicated or geek out too much on options because you can spend all of your time just geeking, geeking out on this and tweaking this and oh, my row is this and, and pretty soon you get down to something, you're never making any trades. You're trying to impress everybody with your brain, um, but it's not making you any money. So focus on the price action of the chart. Make sure you apply the strategy to the chart that makes the most sense for you. I think directional traders, Christo, make a lot more than spread traders. Okay, now I say that with the background of saying, if they do good technical analysis, trade a set of rules, trade a set of guidelines. Okay? You can take any great strategy and lose a ton of money with it if you don't do it properly, right? So I can't just apply a simple answer to that and say that, hey, this is the best. It all depends on you as a trader. Okay, are you following a guideline, a set of rules? Are you doing good technical analysis? If you're doing good technical analysis and following the price action and just buying long calls and long puts, you can do great. Okay, but if you prefer the debit spread, as long as you're doing good technical analysis, you can do call debit spreads and put debit spreads and make great money. Okay, trading that directional movement of the chart. All right. I trade calendars all the time, GP. Um, I was explaining that in here, I trade calendars all the time um, where I'm, I let the stock move and then I'm selling out of the money options in a different month, I, I, all, all the time, all the time. Okay. That's exactly right. You apply a strategy to the chart, not the other way around. People will geek out about the strategy and forget that the most important thing is what is the price of the chart doing? Okay, apply the strategy that you prefer to the chart price action. Okay. All right, guys. Want to say thank you for being here today. I appreciate it a ton. I'm going to take off and go hike with my son. Have a have a birthday day. That sounds fun for me. Um, and kind of chill out for the day. I was originally planning to work. So thank you guys. Hey, I want to wish everyone out there happy Father's Day. 
thanks for being here. By the way, Donna, um, you guys, some of you know her, some of you don't, might not. She works in the background here for us, takes care of all of our scheduling. Happens to be her birthday as well. So if you see her pop in anyway, wish her a happy birthday. Everyone take care. Thank you guys for all the ha birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Um, I will get this video put together as soon as I can. I still haven't got the credit spread finished up. I'll get the debit spread uh, done as well and we'll get that posted as soon as possible. Um, and I'll let you guys know when it's, when it's posted out there. All right. Everyone take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Be safe. All right. And we'll see you all bright and early Monday morning. Thank you guys.